Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the kind uh, introduction. It's, of course, uh, a great pleasure to be part of this uh, academic uh, birthday party for the uh, 10th anniversary of the, of the Hungarian um, Civil Code, which uh, I very much admire, especially in the area of uh, succession law, where it uh, is really very um, innovative. Yeah, unlike the, the young boy, the young uh, Hungarian uh, codex, uh, which is uh, described by Lajos Vikas as uh, a, uh, a late codification, a young codification, a verspätete uh, codification. Uh, the code um, which uh, I have to present to you in the next uh, 20 minutes uh, or so, uh, this code uh, is uh, rather grown up. Uh, it's an old man or an old, uh, old lady um, already. And uh, this code has gone uh, through many phases, but, uh, and this is really rather astonishing, it uh, survived uh, history. The code was born, it's a child of the 19th century, it was born in the second German empire, which was a kind of constitutional monarchy, probably a little bit of absolute monarchy, but uh, with some elements uh, of constitutionalism. It, uh, as a young man, it lived uh, in the first German Republic, the Weimarer Republic, a small phase of uh, democracy in German history. It even survived and also contributed, one has, to, one has to say, to the atrocities of the Nazi uh, time. Unchanged, the same code which applied a couple of years before in, in a democracy. It flourished, one has to say, especially in literature, but also in jurisprudence, it flourished in the Western German uh, democracy. And it even lived a couple of years in, in the East, which uh, was, uh, I just uh, noticed on one of the slides of the previous speakers, a sort of socialism. It was socialism, I think. Yeah? It survived uh, socialism, at least until uh, 1976, when it was abolished by the Zivilgesetzbuch der Deutschen Demokratischen Republik, and it's uh, still in force uh, today, and uh, mainly uh, unchanged. Some parts of the book uh, of the BGB are enforced, um, uh, are, are still in force, uh, as they were when the book was first published in 1896. Yeah, but uh, just allow me um, before addressing some of the reforms of the BGB the big German book, as the Dutch uh, always uh, call the BGB, uh, to, uh, before addressing some of the reforms and also the challenges um, to the BGB and the codification idea uh, in the BGB, to uh, recall uh, some of the facts um, surrounding the BGB, uh, which most of you will probably uh, know anyhow, but I just want to recall them. Yeah, as you all know, the BGB is uh, the comprehensive um, codification of uh, German private law. It covers all areas of, um, of, of private law, except uh, commercial law, which is uh, part of the Handelsgesetzbuch, the HGB, which was even enforced before the uh, BGB was uh, adopted. Yeah, as you can see, the book was uh, adopted, the BGB was adopted in 1896. It entered into force in 1900 after a long legislative uh, process. Uh, I just, on the way to Budapest, uh, I read in uh, Zweigert uh, and Kurtz uh, that apparently uh, the date, 1st January 1900, was deliberately um, um, uh, taken by the, uh, by the, by the, by the emperor himself, uh, William II himself, because he wanted to open the new century with, uh, with a huge uh, codification. I think that's not true. I think uh, Zweigert and Kurtz are not right on this because um, I checked the, 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 the act was signed by the emperor. It was signed. We know when. It was the 18th August uh, 1896. We also know where. It was in the new palace in Potsdam. But we don't know the time. And therefore, I um, tried to, to find out what happened on that day in the, in the new palace. And um, it's uh, quite, that's quite new. It's a, it's a digitaliz digitalization of the... Um, 
Imperial Agendas, it's there now on the, on the internet, published by the Berlin Brandenburg Academy of uh, Science, and I checked the agenda, the imperial agenda uh, of uh, the state. It was a cold day, 70 degrees in Berlin, a rainy day in Berlin, 17 degrees in August, and uh, there is nothing, no mentioning of the Bürgerliche <laughs> Gesetzbuch. The emperor started the day riding the horses, looking after the horses, then um, there was a parade, he exchanged uh, letters with uh, His uh, Majesty the King of uh, Saxony. And of course, it was the birthday, it was the birthday, it's a coincidence, it was the birthday of the Austrian Empire at uh, that, uh, that day. And there was a, um, a, a birthday supper in, in the palace. So it's no mentioning of the BGB. So the BGB, I think, was of no importance for the emperor. And the emperor, who was a bit lazy, uh, just signed it in between, between looking after the horses, uh, probably. Yeah, you all know that um, the BGB follows the Pendect uh, systems, so it was already mentioned before. So we have a general part, uh, we have um, uh, a law of obligations, which is quite, quite uh, comprehensive. Uh, we have a property law part, uh, third book, we have the fourth book, the family law book, and the fifth book, the famous fifth book, the provisions on succession law, which haven't been changed almost at all until, until today. Yeah, only parts which are outside um, uh, the classical areas of, um, of, uh, of private law, which are outside um, uh, the book, are uh, private international law, for example. Private international law is not part of, of the BGB. It's part of a separate act. It's part of the introductory act to the uh, Bürgerliche Gesetzbuch, the so-called um, EG, BGB. Yeah, it was already mentioned, I think, by Christiana, that um, the BGB is a rather theoretical uh, piece of uh, legislation. It employs a rather abstract regulative technique, the so-called Klammertechnik. Uh, I, I, I checked who inv invented this word, Klammertechnik. Uh, it uh, invented, was invented by Gustav Böhmer, which means that certain questions which apply in all areas of the law, they are regulated in a general part. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are regulated in the, in the beginning of the, of the book for all parts of the of the book. So it's a really rather, uh, it contains rather general uh, provisions and um, is rather theoretical insofar. We have general rules in the first part on contracts, juridical, juridical acts especially, uh, declarations of um, intentions. And those provisions, they apply for all areas of law. So a contract uh, from a German perspective is not only a sales contract or contracts in the common law sense. A contract is also a marital agreement. Yeah? It can also be, uh, I mean, an agreement on, uh, on, um, on parental responsibility. It can be um, a waiver of succession rights. It's also a contract. And the same provisions on the formation of contracts apply throughout um, the whole book. The same applies to jur juridical acts. The recognition of fatherhood is a juridical act, a Rechtsgeschäft. But also a contract is a juridical act, a special form of juridical act. So this is all very abstract and very theoretical. So also the language is not at all addressed to the people. It's addressed to professional lawyers, not to all lawyers, but only to private lawyers. So criminal lawyers don't understand the, the BGB. It's really a book for... Um, for, for specialists and for private lawyers, it's rather elegant. So if you, once you understand the language of the BGB, it's uh, a pleasure to apply it and to read it, at least the old parts of it. Some of the newer parts are not that elegant anymore, but uh, the, the older parts um, are very, very efficient and uh, with uh, small sentences um, try to, to, to regulate um, lots of, um, of legal uh, preconditions and, um, and consequences. The BGB is always regarded as a liberal code, so a child of the 19th century, of 19th century liberalism. Freedom of contract um, in the first version of the text uh, was almost unlimited, uh, not only in the law of obligations, but also in family and especially in succession law. I think this is also still, uh, we are German law, in the area of succession law is one of the legal systems which grants as much, uh, um, um, as much contractual freedom as, as possible, much more than 
the Romanist, uh, the French uh, civil code or, or the Italian Codice Civile, for example, when it comes to succession agreement, agreements, so that the testator by a succession agreement or by a mutual will can bind him or herself, can limit its own testamentary freedom, that you can agree on, on, on future successions. All those are things which are not common in other legal systems. So here we have really a true, true contractual freedom throughout uh, the areas which are governed by the, by the, by the, by the civil um, code. Yeah, in the beginning there was little, I mean, there was no consumer protection. I mean, there were some early reforms regarding tenancy. Um, Zweigert Kötz call the BGB as a piece of legislation which is inspired by the spirit of cold individualism, so there is no, no, um, no, um, no protection of the weaker party. There, was, there were some first reforms in the area, as I, as I mentioned, uh, in, in the area of tenancy law, which introduced, uh, to quote a famous uh, a saying of, um, um, of, of Otto von Gierke, who introduced uh, some uh, drops of socialist oil uh, in, the, in the individualistic uh, uh, individualistic and, um, and liberal, liberal um, uh, codification. Yeah, um, it's also known to probably everyone in the audience that um, the BGB was, here it is, was also, um, was also received in other legal systems, especially in the Far East, in Japan and uh, Korea, but also, of course, some elements in other states as well, in Greece, uh, and um, of course also in the, in the Baltic states. Yeah, during the last um, 123 years, um, the BGB of course has um, undergone some reforms. However, it is noticeable that we have almost two parts of the BGB. One part which is really static and another part which is rather dynamic. Let me start with the dynamic parts. We have especially two areas of the BGB which were object of constant reform. One is the law of obligations, um, which was um, in particular comprehensively reformed in 2002. This was really a huge reform. It was really a different law was introduced. I did my first state exam in 2002 and I had the impression to really I had to study a new legal system. It was something totally different from the time uh, before. But of course, there were other uh, um, smaller constant reforms in the, in the area of law of obligations um, as well, um, sectoral uh, reforms, um, um, for, for example, regarding the general partnership just recently, general partnerships company law. The general company was also reformed recently, but also certain contracts uh, were introduced, um, for example, um, a special form of a service contract regarding uh, medical uh, treatment, uh, the case law of our Supreme Court was uh, codified, codified here, and of course all of the uh, EU um, instruments in the area of consumer protection, uh, which mainly of course concerned uh, or concern um, law of obligations, were also uh, integrated uh, in, the, in the code. The most dynamic part of the BGB is however family law. Um, here I think a family lawyer from 1900 wouldn't understand the word of the of the actual uh, code. I mean, I think there's no provision apart from engagement. I think the provisions on the engagement they are they are still the same. I mean, they're not used in practice anymore, but they are more or less the same. The rest of the of family law is uh, totally different. We had huge um, reforms uh, um, in, in in 1957, um, um, abolishing uh, discrimination of women. Um, 1969, abolishing discrimination of children born out of wedlock. 1976, the huge family law reform, especially regarding divorce, so abolishing fault divorce, introducing uh, divorce based on objective uh, grounds uh, and also on consent. 1997, uh, uh, splitting marriage uh, from, uh, from, from, from filiation and from parental responsibility. 2001, introducing same-sex uh, partnerships. 2008, uh, a huge reform of um, 
of the law um, uh, on matrimony property, 2017, introducing uh, same-sex uh, marriages, and 2021 is apparent, I think probably the reform where most of the provisions, or the, or the, it's, the, the reform where, where, where the, 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 the biggest numbers of provisions of the, of the, of the, of the BGB were changed. Um, it, it concerned only guardianship, but guardianship is regulated rather comprehensively, and uh, it, it, everything, most of the most of this part of the law was was reformed uh, just uh, just two years um, um, ago. Yeah, maybe we have many um, reform projects uh, pending, especially on the law of names. Uh, German law has a German private law has an obsession with uh, names and the regulation uh, of names. I think we have the most comprehensive um, set of rules uh, dealing with uh, names, and I can promise you that our legislator is about to um, add, um, uh, to double the amount of provisions on, on the law of, of names. Uh, so it's getting even more complicated. There's, there's a huge uh, parenthood reform um, uh, pending in Germany, and uh, also reform on, on gender recognition. We are just about to introduce a private autonomy when it comes to your gender, so you, that you can end, you change your gender by a Rechtsgeschäft, by a by a, a juridical act, and you don't need any uh, procedure anymore. And uh, uh, we have a debate about a Verantwortungsgemeinschaft, which is, um, nobody knows exactly what it is. Uh, our Minister of Justice has in mind a kind of marriage with more than two people, so three, four, five, six people. I, but I know, I, don't know uh, I haven't seen a couple or a group of persons uh, uh, looking for such an institution, but uh, we are at the moment discussing whether we should introduce such a institution. Yeah, then we have the static parts of the, of the BGB, um, which is uh, property law, um, the general part, and succession law, in particular succession law. Uh, little has changed here. Um, there's also little policy debate in the area of succession law. Uh, one reason for this is probably that parts of our succession law are constitutionally guaranteed. There is a um, decision of the Federal Constitutional Court, which came to the conclusion a couple of years ago that our provisions on forced airship are guaranteed by the German Constitution, so they can't be changed uh, by normal, by a normal legislative act. You would have uh, to change uh, the Constitution in order, for example, to abolish um, a forced airship. Uh, but in general, succession law is regarded as one of the best parts of the original uh, text and uh, practice is more or less happy with succession law. So we have no changes, um, almost no changes um, at all. Yeah, but um, even, and this is my, my last point I would like to address, um, but even um, uh, the good old uh, BGB reaches uh, the limits in the meantime of um, the codification idea. Um, I tried to find some reasons why maybe um, the codification or maybe why the BGB uh, loses more, more and more um, the character of a comprehensive um, codification. One reason is clearly that we have lots of private law in the meantime outside the Bürgerliche Gesetzbuch. This uh, concerns especially um, tort law, strict liability. Most um, provisions on strict li liability are in special uh, pieces of uh, legislation, also some family law instruments. They are not part of uh, the BGB. Um, for example, the division of pension rights, which is very important in practice in, in German family law practice. It's not part of the BGB, but it's part of a separate act. Also, the whole area of gender recognition is also outside uh, the BGB. I think it should be in the BGB because the gender of person is like the um, like, like the name, like the personality is part of the person characteristics and should be uh, part of the, of, the general, uh, of the general part. But this, of course, leads um, to the fact that, that uh, BG, the BGB is not a comprehensive uh, qualification anymore. Also, we have rather dynamic areas of law, private law outside the BGB, intellectual property especially, where we have new approaches uh, when it comes to private law. For example, remedy approaches, and uh, they are not received at all by the general private uh, lawyers, and this is also a danger, of course, for a codification, which uh, in the end is only, yeah, only um, reproduces old uh, uh, theories and not uh, looks to other areas um, of law. One danger comes from the from family law, um, as my pre previous speaker, as, uh, the pre previous speaker uh, mentioned. Um, family law doesn't fit that much into the. 
big code, and this is even true for German uh, family law. We have an increasing isolation of family law. There is, I mean, no, no, no use that family law is part of the BGB. It's a separate book in the BGB, but no or little connections with the rest of the of the, of the BGB. Um, there are even provisions, for example, in, in family law when it comes to juridical acts like blocking statutes, which, which provide that the general part does not apply, yeah, that only family law applies, not the general part um, applies. Uh, and this is totally different, for example, from succession law. In succession law, we have lots of interconnections between the general part and, um, and, and succession law when it comes to uh, the, the whole, uh, whole Rechtsgeschäftslehre, uh, a mistake, uh, duress. Uh, we all take this from the, from the, from the general um, part. Yeah, um, furthermore, there is um, a little cross-sectional coordination between the different areas um, of, the, of the BGB, which is also a problem. Uh, one example, I put it on the slides, is the law on foundations and succession law. We have a new law on foundations, and there is no yeah, coordination with uh, succession law. We allow tying up property in a foundation, but we do not allow to tie up property, for example, by testamentary execution. So there's also yeah, a kind of um, kind, kind of the, 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 the codification idea is losing its, um, its force um, here. Yeah, and of course, um, EU legislation leads, um, destroys, one can say, from at least from a formalistic perspective, the uh, codification. Um, although I think, uh, citing uh, the late, unfortunately the late Jürgen Basedow, um, uh, that um, it's, um, of course it has also uh, plays a role uh, when it comes to EU legislation in order to uh, integrate EU legislation into the national sy system of, of, um, of private law. And this is also a kind of rest or remaining function of, um, of, um, of, the, of the civil code. Yeah, I think this was everything I wanted to share with you. My time is um, up, and therefore I think I stop here. And thank you very much for your attention.